looking after each other. I must say that my mum still does a better job. <laughs> and attending mass at the back of a Challenger tank, the chaplain talks a lot about the war. I pray every night for the poor old soldiers. Quadrons on the battle plan and their part in the war. The common assumption is that it is inevitable. I know that all of us have now decided that we are going to war. I cannot give the times and dates and operational details, but nothing has prepared the Iraqis, not even the bombing of the past five weeks, for the force of the blow that is about to be delivered against them. According to one senior British officer here, we are about to embark on what he calls the last great adventure. Others take a more somber view of it, but the period of waiting in the desert is nearly over. This is Martin Bell with 7th Armoured Brigade for the British Television News Pool. Well, I'm Here and at many other places, the embankment that marks the border has been breached. It's a measure of Allied confidence here with American forces elsewhere today with Egyptians moving in to test Iraq's defences and in this location at least, not even coming under Iraqi artillery fire. That's partly because of Allied artillery, even more of which arrived in Saudi Arabia today. Yet another multiple launch rocket system to join the dozens already bombarding the Iraqi lines. But it's air power that'll make artillery destroyed. Even the most fearsome of Iraq's defenses, its obstacle belt, should be more said today, don't expect a pushover. But commanders are confident the damage they've inflicted so far will see them through. Sure. Perhaps you'd like to use the, this. Point out to us the salient, the key features of this, uh, of this uh, bit of equipment. Well, probably the most salient is the 120mm smoothbore gun here, which is a very good gun. Um, it has a gas turbine engine in the back here, which is uh, an you old... Have to, you have to just, if you, if you do that, we can yes. see things, that's right. Um, which um, is a jet engine virtually, it's exactly the same, it's an old aircraft engine, it uses a lot of fuel. In the, the back half of the turret, in this bit here, it has uh, uh, a magazine for ammunition, about half the ammunition that it carries is in there. Um, the tank itself weighs about 57 tons, it's fast, it produces a very good ride, uh, the gun is stabilised, um, it is a very effective machine. What about its armour? I mean, if it, if it is struck by uh, artillery fire, for instance, what capacity does it have to resist? Well, m m all these modern tanks, if they're st uh, struck by artillery fire, have a direct hit, uh, will um, suffer. They may not necessarily be knocked out, but they will certainly be damaged beyond immediate use. But anything that is a close air burst or close ground burst won't affect them at all. They've actually got to be struck. I thought they had some of them uh, armour that explodes back as, they're, as, they're, as yes. they're hit. And they're um, the um, M1A1 and the um, uh, Challenger have got Chobham armour, which is a composite form of armour. But some of the Russian tanks, and therefore... Um, well, we'll come uh, to that in a moment. Some yes, of the um, Iraqi tanks, the T-72s, might have what's called reactive armour. Uh, which is of use against uh, heat weapons, such as the um, air launch guide missiles. How many of these tanks are, are, are the Americans using? Uh, I mean, it's n they're not all, this is the latest one, That's isn't it? The, latest the main one, one yes. yes. Well, they first of all sent out some uh, tanks, the original M1, which is, has a 115 millimeter gun on. And of course, the American Marine Corps haven't got this tank at all. They've got the old M60 A1, which has got a 105 millimeter gun on it as well. I don't know exactly how many there are there, but we've heard reports of the order of about 1,800. Now let's see the, the British tank, the, the Challenger, which has had a certain amount of controversy in its early days and um, according to reports has been going much better in the desert, is that right, than it was in Germany? Yes, but I think that's largely because um, we've got uh, as many spare parts as we need for this machine in, uh, in the desert for obvious reasons, whereas in Germany there was a shortage of spare parts and therefore when something began to go wrong uh, it was not able to be replaced immediately. Providing uh, the, the um, replenishment of spare parts uh, is there and the machines are used, they actually are proving to be extremely reliable. What are the salient features then of this? Can you point out the things? Well, it has the same bore, 120 millimeter, but rifled gun here. Um, it has a diesel engine in the back half. 
uh, I think the salient difference is that there's no ammunition stowed in this tank above the turret ring, so all the ammunition is stowed in this sort of area here. Which is the effect of that? Well, it's much safer. Um, the other difference is that uh, this tank fires, uh, this tank fires um, uh, separated ammunition, so we've got the projectile and the propellant in two different uh, parts and the propellant is actually kept inside this area here um, in water charge containers so therefore if the tank is penetrated by any red hot particles it's unlikely that we will get an ammunition fire propellant fire in the tank whereas we're not certain we can say the same with other tanks and and if you're in this tank uh, are you actually loading the breech of this gun or is it automatically done yes you're, you're actually loading it um, the, um, if one was to consider I was sitting here as a commander, the gunner would be at my, my, my knees down there and the gun barrel, the gun breech would be coming right back here and on that side, a little bit closer to me than you are, will be the loader who will be standing and he actually has to load first the projectile and then the bag charge uh, before firing. So all that is done down there on that side. Let's have a look at the, at the, at the other tank, the, the main Iraqi tank, the T72. Russian T-72. We should just explain these dates on these, these numbers rather, the Russian tanks, are all dates, aren't they? Yes, 72 so is the design date of the tank yes. and 65 the, the, the yes. date equally. Uh, that's a very good machine, very good tank. That's got um, a 125mm uh, one, smoothbore gun, which is a very effective gun. It has an automatic loader so that you only have two men in the turret as opposed to three, and the total crew being um, three as opposed to four. All its ammunition is in a carousel at the bottom of the, um, of the, bottom of the turret floor, underneath the turret floor there, and it's loaded automatically. But even though it's only got two men in the turret, the turret is much smaller than those of our tanks, and uh, we've always been told that the Russians have only uh, they have had a maximum height of about uh, five foot eight for their tank crews where in order to be able to fit them in. And will this armour, this exploding armour that you, you talk about, this defensive uh, skirt on the tank, uh, make it impervious to some uh, uh, attacks from, from shells from Allied tanks? Well, this particular tank may not have this um, armour on. Um, you will see some, in fact we have in the newspapers seen some photographs of these tanks with small plates about the size of a piece of paper, this size, all the way around the front half of the turret and along the top there and along the front of the um, tank, seen, seen from the front, on the glassy plate. Um, if they have those, then the chances of heat weapons penetrating are very slim. They actually sort of burst and then they replace them overnight. I'm into hip-hop a lot, so I mean that's what I express, being a rapper, my man DJ Hands.